This is Jocko Podcast number 263 with Echo Charles and me, Jocko Willink. Good evening, Echo. Good evening. And this podcast is brought to you by you. That's right. This podcast exists because of your support. And I've always dreaded having to say the words, this podcast is brought to you by whatever. But we don't say that, and we're not gonna say that. We're here, and we're able to do what we do because you support us in a bunch of different ways, and we own what we have here. And we don't rely on any companies to sponsor what we're doing, which is nice. I mean, other than the companies that we actually own. And we, and the companies that we own make the stuff that we actually use to do the things that we like to do. And listen, it is a harder road to take. It's a harder road to take. You can go that, e- you can go, you can go like just get that money. <laughs> and there's been times some people that are on this podcast right now have sort of petitioned for that oh, kind of thing. Okay. A little bit, uh, right? Well. Mm-hmm. Right? <laughs> well, and that's, you know, legitimately, because it's, it's, it's a much harder move to try and build companies, invest in your companies, and run the supply chain and the personnel and deal with all the finances and the taxes and the thousands of things that you got to do to make a buzz, business run. And that's okay. Just, it, well, guess what? It takes work. It takes hard work. It takes discipline because it's a grind. But at the end of the day, guess what? That discipline gives us freedom. Gives us freedom. freedom the freedom to talk about whatever we want. The freedom to talk for five hours without having to take a break to mention some company. We don't have to do any of that. And we can make, like I said, we can make the podcast as long as we want, as short as we want. We can do whatever we want. We got the freedom to do that. We have the freedom to do that because we also have freedom of speech, which with the with the incredible foresight and intention is the first amendment of the Constitution of the United States of America. The first amendment is Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof or abridging the freedom of speech or of the press or the right of the people peaceably to assemble and to petition the government for a redress of grievances. So there you go. The government shall make no law to abridge freedom of speech. Doesn't get any clearer than that. But it does get a little muddier than that in in modern times, right? They didn't have podcasts back in the day that I'm aware of. <laughs> so as smart as the founding fathers were, and as well as the Constitution has held up as a document, well, there's been there's interesting things going on right now. Interesting things going on right now, and in some ways, it's troubling because you see. You can see speech being controlled. You can see speech being censored. You can see meanings, the way speech is being used, being manipulated. You can see words, the meaning of words being changed. And and we've seen this before throughout history. And one of the best examples of this, it's a very clear example. And it's one I talked about with Jordan Peterson. <laughs> and when Jordan was on, you weren't there. The, on the second or third time that Jordan came on, mm. you weren't there. But we, and it's actually happened with every time he's come on. We've had some, I've had some plan about what we're going to talk about. We don't talk about any of that. We talk about something completely different. Yeah. <laughs> so, so on that one, we were going to talk about the Gulag Ar- Archipelago and by, by Solzhenitsyn. And we did cover this one thing that I, I really wanted to talk about because I think it's important. And it's, 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 a, it's an example of the way language 
drives thought and policy. And it's, it's one word. It's, the word is kulak. And the, what that word originally meant was former sort of workers or peasants that had become wealthy, right? So this person's a kulak, right? They, they, they were in the lower class and they moved up. And then over time, it became a little bit more pejorative, meaning it had a, it, it started to take on a negative connotation. So eventually it became Solzhenitsyn in, in the Gulag Archipelago. He says, quote, a, a miser, a, a, a kulak sort of became to represent a miserly, dishonest rural trader who grows rich, not through his own labor, but through someone else's. So, so it's it's got a negative connotation. Connotation, but he says about those kulaks at the time that there wasn't that many of them. In fact, he says that they could be numbered on one's fingers. So there's a very small number of these kind of bad people that had made money and kind of made money off the backs of others. Well, as the as the revolution went on. The communist revolution went on circa like 1915, 1916, 1917. The meaning of the word started to encompass more, more people. It started to, and this is again, this is from this is from Solzhenitsyn. It started to include people, all those who in any way hired workers even if it was only when they were temporarily short of working hands in their own families. So you had something that used to just mean someone that had kind of risen up and, and made it out of the lower class into the middle class. Then it became someone that made it to the middle class, but they did it in a bad way. And now it's, hey, anybody that's sort of, anybody that's hired another person is a kulak. <clears throat> By the 1930s, Solzhenitsyn, he says that the word was used to, quote, describe all strong peasants in general. Peasants strong in management, strong in work, or even strong merely in convictions. So you can see this word, which used to just represent a very small number of people. All of a sudden, it starts to represent more and more people, if you have anyone working for you. And, and, and eventually, an official decree comes out from the government. It releases an official de- uh, definition of what a kulak is. And, and by that definition, a kulak was any person who used hired labor, owned a mill, a creamery, processing equipment, or a, quote, complex machine with a motor. Systematically rented out agricultural equipment or facilities or was involved in trade, money lending, commercial brokerage, or other sources of non-labor income. And this last definition made it so that anyone that sold surplus goods, so if you had extra stuff and you sold it, you were a kulak. So now we're, we're basically now talking, if you had a yard sale, <laughs> right? So now we're basically talking about yeah about everyone. And then the government set out to destroy the kulaks and thereby destroy the strength of the peasantry. And and the communists started a program called dekulakization. We're going to get rid of them. The, the, the people that were identified as kulaks, which again, now there's a ton of them, they were ordered to give their farm animals, their livestock to government authorities. So now, so now we're taking property. Many of them, and many of the kulaks at this time are like, okay, well then I'm going to kill my livestock and you know keep the meat and use the hides. And then when they tried to kill the livestock instead of giving them up, the communists made a new law which made it possible to prosecute people for the malicious slaughtering of livestock. This is, like, isn't it just, you see these steps going and it gets worse and worse. But that's still, still left a little bit to, a little bit, you, know, you could still maybe move through that. You could still probably get away with it. So then Stalin decreed 
in order to oust the kulaks as a class, the resistance of this class must, must be smashed in open battle and it must be deprived of the productive sources of its existence and development that is in turn towards the policy of eliminating the kulaks as a class. We're gonna get rid of all of them. And by the way, look at who we're talking about. We're talking about people that, we're talking about the people that had stepped up and made things happen, right? Mm-hmm. People that owned machinery, people that owned a mill, people that ran businesses. That's who they're talking about. Well, guess what? When you do that, when you get rid of the people that own farm equipment and farms and livestock, guess what happens? You run out of food. You don't have anyone making food anymore. And this leads to starvation. And and when you get starvation, now you get people that are hungry. Now you get people, now you get kind of a mob rule thing going on. And this is a very horrible thing to think about. If you weren't starving. If you weren't starving or your family wasn't starving, well, how could you not be starving? You would, be, you would not be starving if you had food. If you had food, guess what you were? You're a kulak. Kulak. That's what you are. So, so what does mob rule look like when it is approved by the government or it's ignored by the government? What does it look like? There's a description uh, an author named Robert Conquest. He wrote a book called Reflections of a Ravaged Century. And this is a description from that book, which is actually from a, from a Russian journalist, uh, Grossman, who said that the party activists who helped the state political directorate, the secret police, also known as the GPU, with arrests and deportations, quote, were all people who knew one another well and knew their victims. But in carrying out this task, task, they became dazed, stupefied. They would threaten people with guns as if they were under a spell, calling small children kulak bastards, screaming blood suckers. They had sold themselves on the idea that so-called kulaks were pariahs, untouchables, vermin. They would not sit down at a parasite's table. The kulak child was loathsome. The young kulak girl was lower than a louse. Mob scenario. The book goes on to quote a guy named Lev Kopalev, a party activist. So this guy was in the, in the communist game who eventually became a dissident. And he said it was, excru- it was excruciating to see and hear all of this and even worse to take part in it. And I persuaded myself, explained to myself, I mustn't give in to debilitating pity. This is what he's telling himself. Look, I can't have any pity. We were realizing historical necessity We were performing our revolutionary duty. We were obtaining grain for the socialist fatherland, for the five-year plan. So Stalin ends up ordering the kulaks to be liquidated as a class, which in turn causes the Soviet famine in 1932 and 1933, that results in at least three million dead. Solzhenitsyn said six million. 1.8 million were sent to labor colonies. Only 1.3 million ever actually made it to the labor colonies. Another half a million of them just disappeared, gone. Like we don't even know what happened, but obviously didn't turn out good for them. And, and then you have the rest of the nightmare of of the Soviet disaster. And and you can pull that thread and you get to this language. You get to language, an attack on language, on what you say on what people say or what people don't say or what people are allowed to say or what people are forced to say. Because our, our words, they make our thoughts. <laughs> I mean, you, we think in words. 
and 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 we have to keep our words free to keep our minds free and i thought that we learned this and if it didn't if it wasn't obvious enough obvious enough from watching what happened in the soviet union then when you read 1984 by george orwell you were, by george orwell you said oh okay yeah okay yeah got it didn't he spell it out for us if you've ever read that book, and I, at least when I went through high school, you had to read that book. And at some point, at some point, I'm sure I will cover the whole book on the podcast. But without even talking about the plot, just talking about the world that he paints in this in this book. The book is, you know, it was written in the whatever 1947, I think, and but it's about 1984. And you've got this omnipresent government. You've got surveillance everywhere. Everyone's heard that Big Brother. Do you remember reading 1984? No, no. So it's 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 a futuristic time. It's everything is controlled by the government. You've heard Big Brother is watching you, right? Yes, sir. That's where it comes from. There's a show called Big Brother. Too, oh, okay. Is it about is it about no. a dystopian future? <laughs> no, sir. It is. Not. <laughs> What's it about? <laughs> It's a reality show that everyone uh, lives in okay. this okay. like okay. house. Yeah. That's a set. But here's the thing, though. It's dystopian. It's not dystopian. Well, I guess. Is there thought control? No, but there's cameras <laughs> in every single room. Why don't they let me run a reality the, TV <laughs> program? <laughs> I think it's pretty clear why. Crazy. But, but but yeah. So they they go around in the house and there's cameras like mounted cameras in all the rooms, uh, like yeah. surveillance yeah, cameras yeah, essentially, and thing, you can yeah. like tune in on off times and stuff and just watch them. Like you could do that, like you could go on a website and just watch the people in the house. Yeah, like they, I think they used to play it on like Showtime where it's like Big Brother Live and you can just, just tune in and, watch, and them. watch them do nothing, like do normal everyday stuff. But here's the thing there's, I think there's now like, that's totally common, right? Because through the internet, you can just do that. There's people doing that right now, well, screening, scream, or streaming their whatever, they're doing their homework. Yeah. I, I saw something, some thing about, <clears throat> I think it was a Japanese dude who would like do his homework. And he was getting, he would have millions of people watching him. He was super organized. I'll give it up for him, yeah. I, if I remember correctly. Could you see the content of his homework? Because yeah, that's different. It, it was like, there was multiple camera views. You know, you could kind of oh, yeah. see what he was reading. You oh, could see what yeah. he was working on. Yeah. Okay. And, and that's what he did. He did his homework or well, something like that. Okay, so that makes sense. If it was just a picture of him doing his homework and you couldn't see the homework, that's different. That's weird. But if you can see what homework he's doing, oh, yeah, that's good, man. Why is that? Not, well, I don't why see. are you more into I'm not interested in his homework at all. Well, so, I mean, pretty much. I, I'm not into video games either but bro you can watch people mm. live streaming their screen and a little corner of them their face playing just playing yeah, video games yeah. or whatever and this is like multi very, very, million there's there's hundreds of people that watch those <laughs> hundreds of millions <laughs> per minute watching that yeah. stuff but uh the it's different because big brother is like them doing normal stuff mm. all day all night that's the big big brother live but they have a voice in there too mm. Can I mean, you give directions? It it says, "Hey, you're breaking this rule," or you're. Who makes the rules? Uh, the show or whatever. Are the rules, are the rules tyrannical in any way? I, no. I mean, it's a game show. At the end mm-hmm. of the day, it's like it lasts like a few months or whatever. Mm-hmm. I don't know how long. And they, you know, they have little challenges. How do you defeat the opponents? In challenges. So you can fight They're, them. In yeah, and then you have a vote, and it's like oh, okay, you know, it's okay. a, it's a thing, you know. All right. Well, that that term, Big Brother, comes from 1984. There's surveillance watching you all the time. There's perpetual war going on. There's historical negation, which which is when you falsify history or you distort history. And there's a bunch of just really, I was going to say cool quotes, but they're not cool. They're actually horrible quotes, but they're they're they really capture what the book is about and there's one saying in the book who controls the past controls the future who controls the present controls the past all these sayings in there when you read them you go Eesh. there's thought police who are tracking people for committing thought crimes there's people who commit thought crimes who and they or they don't tow the party line they don't they don't they don't tow the party line and if you don't tow the party line or if you commit thought crimes, you become an unperson. 
meaning you just disappear and all evidence that you ever existed is destroyed. You are gone. You become an unperson. You get erased. You get erased. You get canceled, right? <laughs> Sounds familiar, right? So you get canceled. Then they, then pff, this is crazy. In 1984 in the book, there's something called the prole feed. Short for the proletariat feed which is a steady, unending stream of mindless entertainment which is produced to distract and occupy the minds of the masses. Does that sound familiar at all? Yeah. <laughs> so you yeah. can spend all this time distracted and wasting and being just mindlessly entertained. Yeah. It sounds like that video game scenario. It sounds like you the, 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 it sounds like the thing you got in your pocket. Yeah. Which, by the way, it gets even scarier. They have something called a telescreen. The telescreen, you watch it, and it watches you. Kind of like your phone, which is tracking where you are, identifying what you're watching. Like it's what your phone is watching you as much as you're watching it, right? We this is factual. There's a word, there's a word called a word called upsub, which means you submit to the higher authority. It's viewed in like a positive way, and 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 then all these words, all these words, are framed on a on a new evolving language which is called new speak. So we have a new way of speaking. It's called new speak. The old way of speaking is called old speak. That's English. That's the English language is called old speak. New speak is what we're talking now. And they got a bunch of li- they got a bunch of these w- words and we're going to get into the language of it. But if you add plus as a prefix to any word, it strengthens the word. So good is good. Excellent, they get rid of the word excellent. They say plus good. Because they're trying to limit the vocabulary of people. Huh. And people have old think. If people have old think, they have ideas or they have memories that are pre prior to the revolution. So this is right, this is scary to think about. And and I know we don't normally talk much about you know current events really on this podcast because there's enough <laughs> because there's enough of that filling everyone's prol feed every single day without us chiming in i mean you 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 got prol feed coming at you 24/7 in thousand different angles and so so you know i'm not we don't spend a bunch of time talking about hey, what what happened in the last you know 12 hour news cycle <sighs> But you know, the other day when we were talking to Cowboy, <clears throat> Cowboy Khan, the Vietnamese SOG soldier, he gave me a little warning that I had to pay some attention to. You know, and he, he was saying, you know, you got to watch out for communism. And I kind of, you know, I kind of brushed it off and said, well, you know, we're a strong country. Um, we. We are rooted in, we're rooted in freedom or something like that and you know it's in our blood and we will remain free and and he kind of just said be careful because he had seen it take over in Vietnam and I mean you want to talk you look at the history of the Vietnamese people you want to talk about rooted in freedom like that that country is legit they 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 do not get they do not take easy to occupiers it's in their blood freedom and look what happened it happened and it happens slowly and you can see in this like like in the soviet union one thing that happens is it part of it starts with speech it starts with banning words it starts with changing the meaning of words and, and that's what happens in in the book 1984 and there's all kinds of quotes in this book. And they're they're just eerie. They're eerie when you hear them and you think about the context of the world right now. I, I plucked out some of the some of the quotes. 
if all others accepted the lie which the party imposed, if all records told the same tale, then the lie passed into history and became the truth. How about this one? We know that no one ever seizes power with the intention of relinquishing it. Here's one. The ideal set up by the party was something huge, terrible, and glittering. A world of steel and concrete, of monstrous machines and terrifying weapons, a nation of warriors and fanatics marching forward in perfect unity, all thinking the same thoughts and shouting the same slogans, perpetually working, fighting, triumphing, per- triumphing, persecuting. 300 million people all with the same face. Here's another interesting one. How could you make appeal to the future when not a trace of you, not even an anonymous word scribbled on a piece of paper could physically survive? Another section, every record has been destroyed or falsified. Every book rewritten. Every picture has been repainted. Every statue and street building has been renamed. Every date has been altered. And the process is continuing day by day and minute by minute. History has stopped. Nothing exists except an endless present in which the party is always right. Another one, never again will you be capable of ordinary human feeling. Everything will be dead inside you. Never again will you be capable of love or friendship or joy of living or laughter or curiosity or courage or integrity. You will be hollow. We shall squeeze you empty and then we shall fill you with ourselves. And... There's, this book is just filled with these eerie, eerie statements. But in the end of the book, the the main character, Winston, he finally breaks. Like he's he's resistant through the book and he's trying to maintain some some level of humanity and individuality. And in the end he breaks. And and it finishes up by saying, But he was all right. But it was all right. Everything was all right. The struggle was finished. He had won the victory over himself. He loved Big Brother. Very, very depressing. (laughs) It's very depressing when the human spirit is broken, and it's even more depressing when the human spirit is broken en masse, which is what this book portrays. And, And... George Orwell does a great job. This whole, this whole, this whole explanation and this trick and this this thing that he does with language is very powerful, and it's calculated and it's deliberate, which is which is which is the way it happens. And like I said, one day I'm sure I'll cover this whole book, but tonight I just I just wanted to cover one part of the book, one part of the book that I want to dive into. So, so George Orwell wrote the book, and he's got a very interesting past. I mean, he he had a he he's a very interesting guy. And the reason I say that is because he's not just some academic that sat in a ivory tower somewhere. He had a lot of experience in life. He had been a policeman in India. He had he had fought in the Spanish Revolution. He'd been shot in the neck. So, I mean, this guy is not. This guy's not just a, you know, uh, just some person that's read a bunch of books and is an academic. No, he's, he's, he's been out there in the world. But he, he wrote, so in this book, at the end of the book, he's got this appendix to the book. And the appendix at the end of the book is about this language. It's about this language newspeak. And, and in a way... <laughs> 
it it might be the most important message in the book, or at least it, maybe it's not the most important message in the book, but it's at least it's it's at least it's the least appreciated message in the book. And that, that and that's why I want to read some excerpts from that because this part of the book really starts to make you think, makes me think, anyways, about where we are, about what we have to be careful of. So the appendix is written, this appendix that I'm talking about that we're gonna jump into, it's written almost as like an academic assessment of the new speak language. So sometime in the future, beyond, okay, in the book, sometime in the future of this book, some academic type person is writing about like a historical review of this language because you can tell when reading it that the totalitarian the totalitarian state that this takes place in didn't work right it, at some point failed it failed to really maintain the control and suppress the human spirit so that's a positive sign right mm. even though they got winston some people stood up against it mm. and they were able to fight it off and now you get this person this this person writing this sort of historical documentation about this language and you can kind of see he kind of indicates that that one of the reasons maybe that the that the totalitarian government wasn't able to maintain control was because they couldn't get full control of the language. And it's very interesting, very interesting to go through. So here we go. 1984 by George Orwell and we're jumping right, we're skipping the entire novel. Partly because I think most people have read it. I hope. But I want to jump into the to the this appendix. So here we go. Newspeak was the official language of Oceana, that's the that's the totalitarian state, and had been devised to meet the ideological needs of Ingsoc, which Ingsoc is an abbreviated term for English socialism. In the year 1984, there was not as yet anyone who used Newspeak as his sole means of communication, either in speech or writing. The leading articles, so, so, at, the, so at the point that this book was written, at the point, at the point when 1984, in 1984 in this world, mm. no one was fully speaking Newspeak yet. That's why you could read it. That's why you could read these words. Mm. They hadn't gotten the new language to where they wanted it to be. The leading article in the Times were written in in it, but this was a tour de force that could only be carried out by a specialist. So only like people that were really fluent in Newspeak could write the headlines. It was expected that Newspeak would have finally superseded Old Speak, or Standard English as we should call it, by the year 2050. Meanwhile, it gained ground steadily, all party members tending to use new speak words and grammatical constructions more and more in their speech every day. The version in use in 1984 and embodied in the ninth and 10th editions of the new speak dictionary was a provisional one and contained many superfluous words and archaic formation, formations which were due to be suppressed later. It is, the f- it is in the final perfected version as embodied in the 11th edition of the dictionary that we are concerned here. So, so this is talking about something that you don't get to see in the book, which is the final kind of version of Newspeak, what they wanted it to be. The purpose of Newspeak was not only to provide a medium of expression for the worldview and mental habits proper to the devotees of Ingsoc, but to make all other modes of thought impossible it was intended that new speak had been adopted once and for all that old speak force would be forgotten and a heterical thought that is a thought diverging from the principles of ingsoc should be literally unthinkable at least so far as it is dependent on words so there was going to be you couldn't you couldn't commit a thought crime anymore because you wouldn't have the capability of expressing what it was. Its vocabulary was so constructed as to give exact and often very subtle expression to every meaning that a party member could probably wish, 
properly wish to express while excluding all other meanings and also the possibility of arriving at them by indirect methods. So you can even use like multiple words to figure out how to say something that wasn't on board with the party. This was done partly by the invention of new words, but chiefly by eliminating undesirable words and by stripping such words as remained of unorthodox meanings and so far as possible of all secondary meanings whatsoever. To give a single example, the word free still existed in Newspeak, but it could only be used in such statements as, this dog is free from lice, or this field is free from weeds. It could not be used in the old sense of politically free or intellectually free, since political and intellectual freedom no longer existed even as concepts and were therefore of necessity, nameless. Couldn't even think of it. You couldn't even think of being free. The concept didn't exist anymore. They eliminated the word. Quite apart from the suppression of definitely heretical words, reduction of vocabulary was regarded as an end in itself and no word that could be dispensed with was allowed to survive. Newspeak was designed not to extend, but to diminish the range of thought. And this purpose was indirectly assisted by cutting the choice of words down to a minimum. Scary, right? Yeah, it's interesting. Newspeak was founded on the English language as we now know it, though many Newspeak sentences, even when not containing newly created words would be barely intelligible to an English speaker of our own day. Newspeak words were divided into three distinct classes known as the A vocabulary, the V, the B vocabulary, and the C vocabulary. It will be simpler to discuss each class separately, but the grammatical peculiarities of the language can be dealt with in the section devoted to the A cat vocabulary since the rules held good for all three categories. So this is the A Vocabulary, the A vocabulary. The A vocabulary consisted of the words needed for the business of everyday life. For such things as eating, drinking, working, putting on one's clothes, going up and down stairs, riding in vehicles, gardening, cooking, and the like. It was composed almost entirely of words that we already possess. Words like hit, run, dog, tree, sugar, house, field. But in comparison with present day English, Vocabulary, their number was extremely small while their meanings were far more rigidly defined. All ambiguities and shades of meaning had been purged out of them. So far as it could be achieved, a new speak word of this class was simply a staccato sound expressing one clearly understood concept. It would have been quite impossible to use the A vocabulary for literary purposes or for political or philosophical discussions. It was intended only to express simple, propulsive thoughts, usually involving concrete objects or physical actions. So the general populace can't even carry on a political debate or a philosophical discussion because they don't just don't even have the vocabulary for it. They just can't even have it. Right. So we're just we're just shutting it down. The grammar of Newspeak had two outstanding peculiarities. The first was almost a complete interchange, interchangeability between different parts of speech. Any word in the language, in principle, this applied to even very abstract words, such as if or when, could be used as a verb, noun, adjective, or adverb. Between the verb and the noun form, when they were of the same root, there was never any variation. This rule of itself involving the destruction of many archaic f forms. The word thought, for example, did not exist in Newspeak. It, its place was taken by think, which did the duty for both noun and verb. No etymological principle was followed here. In some cases, it was the original noun that was chosen for retention. In other cases, it was the verb. Even where a noun and verb of kindred meaning were not etymo etymologically connected, one or the other of them was frequently suppressed. There was, for example, no such word for cut. 
its meaning being sufficiently covered by the noun verb knife. So can you knife me a a piece of cake? (laughs) Adjectives were formed by adding the suffix full to the noun verb and adverbs by by adding wise. Thus, for example, speedful meant rapid and speed wise meant quickly. Certain of our present day adjectives such as good, strong, big, black, soft were attained, but their total number was very small. There was little need for them since almost any adjectival meaning could be arrived at by adding full to a noun verb. None of these now existing adverbs was retained except very few already ending in wise. The wise termination was invariable. The word well, for example, was replaced by good wise. (laughs) In addition, any word this applied in principle to every word in the language could be negatived by adding the affix un or could be strengthened by the affix plus or for still greater emphasis, double plus. (laughs) So, for example, Uncold, uncold meant warm. <clears throat> as opposed, as opposed to uncool. There's no word for cool. Yeah, I'm just saying in real life, there's a word called uncool, oh, and the it. short uh, version is uns. Oh. Unkoi, that's what it is. It's called uns. Yeah, but it's not the temperature cool. It's you being cool or mm. uncool. Uncool and uns. Uns is like just short for yeah, it. Yeah. So if I'm walking behind you, I trip your foot. That's uns. I'm pretty uns, yeah. Mm. And yeah, actually, you know what? It's it's more used for stuff that's like more uns than that. Mm-hmm. It's like oh, it's, it's, so it's a little bit more of a severe phrase. Severe, yes, mm-hmm. I think so. In my experience, that's how it. Like if I if I trip you and you fall and it's in front of some people, that's yeah. pretty uns. Mm-hmm. Yeah. If you spill your beverage on your. I was going to say shirt, but we're probably not wearing a shirt since we're in Hawaii. No, very rarely. Yeah. If you do it on purpose, it's on shirt or no shirt, I think. <laughs> <laughs> but actually, you know what? Now they think of it, it's essentially the same thing. Yeah. Except the plus part. I guess if you replace it with very, because there's like plus plus, right? Yeah. If you say that's very cool. Well, no, there's double plus. Double plus, yes. yes double yes. plus cold meant very cold. Dang. It's kind of efficient in a way. Pl- wait. So uncold meant warm plus cold and double plus cold meant very cold and superlatively cold. Yeah, very, (laughs) very cold. It was also possible in present day English to modify the meaning of almost any word by prepositional affixes, such as anti, post, up, down. By such methods, it was found possible to bring about an enormous diminution of vocabulary. Given, for instance, the word good. Yes, sir. There was no need for such a word as bad, since the required meaning was equally well, indeed better expressed by ungood. I don't know. This seems like there could be a t shirt possibility <laughs> there. <laughs> and I don't say that very often. Uh, no, but, yeah. you know, and it seems like we've talked about good a fair amount, and we do have a t shirt that does say good. Yeah. Might be kind of cool to have a t-shirt that said ungood. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe a picture of a Hawaiian getting tripped up yeah, on the beach. That would be very ungood, yes. Very uncool. All that was necessary. In any case, where two words formatted a natural pair of opposites was to decide which of them to suppress. Dark, for example, could be replaced by unlight or light by undark according to preference. Mm-hmm. You get rid of one of those two words. Yeah. Wait, according to preference. So yeah, so they would just pick either. Uh, we got light and dark. We don't need both those words. Right. So we pick one of them and then put on in front of it for the other one. You know what's actually kind of scary? If you let it be scary is like. This whole thing is scary. It kind of makes sense. That's the scary part. Well, well uh, you, okay, no, there's no, nuance here, to you it. You know where that side came from? That side came from the fact that when I, I was when I was an English major. Oh, no. <laughs> Yeah, well, and look, man, yeah. the English language there's there's things that are met that make no sense whatsoever. Yeah, yeah. Fully. Like if you were a if you have an engineering mind, right, where you like <coughs> you know the rules, there's the rules, oh, we yeah. follow the rules, and you try and figure out what how to do English, yeah. you're gonna have a real hard time with it, man. Oh yeah, and that makes sense because, bro, when I got you know when I first got into whatever I got into it was uh, HTML. 
Oh, it's, we're talking computer languages. Yeah, hypertext markup mm. language to be exact. Yeah, yeah. Um, of and, and if you go deeper into the coding <laughs> thing, you know, it, it's that's straight up like that is engineering mind. Right. Where it's like, bro, the computer's like, hey, tell me what to do. I'll do it. But mm. you better tell me the right thing. If you, I don't know, I don't know about tones. You tell me the words or the characters or whatever, and I'll do it. And you can tell them like accidentally the wrong thing. They're going to do that thing. Mm -hmm. That's exactly what a computer does. So you better be specific. And if you're not specific, it simply either won't happen or it'll do the thing that you mistakenly were specific about. Yeah. That's a little something that we like to call operator error. Operator error. Meaning I messed up. You know, when they, when the GPSs first came out. Yeah. When they first came out, I was pretty, I was, my first reaction was like, why do I need to carry that thing? That thing weighs 25 pounds. <laughs> and they're like, yeah, hell yeah. And then they say, well, you know, you'll know where you are. And I go, I have a map and compass. I know exactly where I am. Yeah. You know, I, I've had the training. I'm doing a terrain study. I know where I'm at. I have a map and compass. I know, I, I know where I'm at. Yeah. I mean, It'd be like, you know, if, do you need a GPS to get home right now? Me, no. From here? No, sir, I didn't. That's how I felt. If someone, when they started telling me I needed a GPS in the field, I was kind of like, the, the exact same way you feel. I was like, why would I need this thing? It weighs 25 pounds. I have a map, I have a compass. I know exactly where I am. I don't need anything else to help me. Mm -hmm. But there are some situations, you know, when you're out in the open ocean, there's no, there's nothing to get a bearing off of. Yeah. There's nothing there. So when you're over the horizon, you can't shoot a bearing. Once you get closer to the shore, you can shoot a bearing and you can figure out where you are. In the open desert sometimes too, mm -hmm. there's nothing to shoot a bearing off of huh. that you can see. Yeah. So sometimes you do need that GPS, but the f early GPSs, they they weren't that good. Well, they, they took a long time to find themselves, but once they found themselves, then all of a sudden I realized, well, this thing is freaking super accurate. Mm. And sometimes people would, get lost, right? Mm -hmm. You know, and then they'd blame the GPS. The GPS told me to do it. Right. And I would say operator error. Yeah. That thing did not, is, you don't have the one GPS that took and changed the coordinates of, of Earth. Right? right, yeah. That didn't happen. And sure enough, I'd pull it out and be like, oh yeah, you missed a digit here. Yeah. Or you added to, you know, you, you fat yeah. fingered the digit over here. <laughs> that and that's it. the problem. Oh yeah. That, that oh man, that's so, that's so true. So like in HTML as well, right? So it's it's essentially like, and you you talk about your English major mm -hmm. and you know how it's like. I took a class a called time. Advanced Grammar and Syntax. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So the reason that okay, so and I'm not an I'm not an English major, mm -hmm. but I talk English to other people. And here's this little factor in English is the is is one of the main differentiators between like the engineering situation and mm -hmm. the, the me talking to you situation. I can use like tones and all this stuff, my emotion and all this stuff or whatever. And I can say like literally the wrong thing, but I can say, hey, you know what I mean though. And you could probably say yes. Mm -hmm. There is that little soft wiggly room, you know? Mm -hmm. or, if I'm, you know or if I misspeak and say someone else's name, but you know I meant this other guy's name in a story or something like this. Mm -hmm. And I can be like, oh, you know what I mean? And you'd be like, yeah, yeah, I know what you mean. There's That does not exist in, in, in HTML. Machine language. Yeah. You can't be like, you know, <clears throat> Five 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 six one five 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 six one five 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 six one five five six and then maybe like a two, mm -hmm. you know, and then five five, five you know, the thing's like okay two that's on purpose boom let's execute yep. that that's what the machine does instead of like all right hey do you, did you mean five five six one on this two here and then you know like a person will think that you know yeah you know, I, I saw this thing stuff. one time it was a guy trying to um, explain like about the piano and about what 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 it how you play the piano good basically mm. and so he plays a song and he basically hit the notes like a machine you know what i'm saying yeah. like yeah. ding 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 and just hit it like and it was some famous you know song on the piano i don't know what it was but some yeah. kind of like classical piano song yeah. but he plays it like a robot basically just every key gets the same yeah. pressure and whatever uh -huh. and then he plays it like a human yeah. And it sounds really, really different. Yeah. So there's a lot Which that's one going was on. Better, you think? Oh, the the human one was way better. Yeah. So yeah, you know, it's it, like this too. It's the same thing with guitar. Mm -hmm. Like you can get people that pluck the notes and they can pluck them perfectly, yeah. but then you get, you know, Jimmy Page and he's he's bending them and 
yeah. hitting the wrong note and bringing it back. I mean, yeah, yeah, it's yeah. it's a human element. There's a rawness to it. Yeah, you know? there's a rawness to it that's positive. Yeah, it's like. Uh, you know, obviously millions of examples, but like you have analog and digital, like even if you go film, right? Mm -hmm. If you go film, there's little imperfections in there that make it kind of a softer mm -hmm. kind of feel. Mm -hmm. And then digital is kind of hard, even though digital is getting so advanced where it's kind of incorporating that kind of stuff in that. But CGI, for example, mm -hmm. like if you look at early CGI, you're like, bro, that's so lame because it's too perfect. perfect. It's too like computer. It looks like a video game almost, right? You forgot like all the light bouncing off of this thing, that leaf over there and all the light spill from this color of this guy's shirt and all the imperfections, all mm -hmm. that stuff is all in play in real life. And that's how like real life is, you know? And then, but you try to recreate it in a computer especially one that's not as accurate as real life, which yeah. is going to take a while, but it's going to feel like a computer, you know? So I was listening to someone talking about making music and uh, it had to do with Jack White from the White Stripes. Sure. White Stripes. And, and basically when you get a drummer, like nowadays, what they do, if, they, if, if you and I are going to make a record, so here's what we do. You down? <laughs> here's what sure. we do. We take the record, we, we, we record a snare drum, crack, and we record 30 cracks on the snare drum. Mm. We take the perfect one that sounds perfect, that's the snare. Mm. And then we take the hi-hat, and we get the perfect, we record 50 of them, 100 of them, we get the perfect one that sounds exactly the way we want it. Mm. And then we take that, and then we take all the different drums, we find the perfect sounds, we're making a digital drum. It's, it's a recording of a real drum, yeah. but it is, it's the same one, it's a perfect shot, snare shot, and they take that, and then they lay down the beat, and the beat is 1,000% accurate, because it's a computer, right? right. It's, it's absolutely a perfect. Right, right, just right on. It's yeah. right on every single time. Yeah. And that right there, when you hear it, and that's what, when you hear like a pop 40, whatever, like a pop 40 music, that's what you're hearing. You're hearing a, sure, you can be like, oh yeah, a person played that, but it got played. It, they can also take the drum, like if a drummer, and they can line up his, he was off by a half a millisecond. Cool, it's yeah. all perfect now. They line it all up, they line it all up. So you're hearing this, what you said, you're hearing this perfection. Yeah. And there's a, there's a, there's a, a fakeness yeah, to it. There's, there's something a, that we don't like. Yeah. When you hear like for the White Stripes, because we're talking about the White Stripes, or Jack White, he's he's doing things that, 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 that you're like, oh, that was he, he just <laughs> did something wild, right? Yeah, there's yeah, a yeah. human there, yeah, and and that gives it this reality, yeah. So there's a we want to have that, you know. I want to have that. Did you think when I said what sounded the when you said what sounded better the the mechanical piano playing t sound or the human? What, did you think I was gonna say the mechanical sounding no, one? No. Were you just know. checking me? Yeah, that's one way to put it, yeah, exactly. It, I wasn't checking you, I was like, well, you know how you wanna expose the example? It's kinda like that, like we're, cause you weren't making a point, or were you? I, it didn't seem like you were making a point that one was necessarily better or worse, you were just identifying what the difference. That's what it seemed like. So I, I yeah, right. You're, I, was you're right. I wasn't I wasn't purposely making the point that one was better or worse. Right. I thought that would be self evident. And if you ever heard a robot play a piano, you would know that it was kind of self evident <laughs> that it sounds whack. <laughs> I don't know that I've ever heard When a I was robot a kid they had uh, like these um, pianos that had these pieces of paper, these rolls of paper that that would go through and it would it was basically some kind of a mechanical computer uh -huh. that told it what notes to play and it would ding ding oh, yeah, ding yeah, ding yeah, ding yeah. ding 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 the self playing piano yeah self playing piano yeah huh old school self playing piano yeah but i would think that that would still have this analog feel to it if it was physical paper it, it, it had a little bit it had more analog than a computer yeah, because computer, guess yeah. what the the analog machine is it's, like not perfect. It's still doing the work. Yeah, exactly right. It still part. has to like hit the note in there. Yeah, it has to hit that little thing. Has to hit the string. Yeah, and so that's the a mechanical thing, and all right? That is already, yeah, yeah, it's, yeah that's a, absolutely correct. It's mechanical, not digital. Right. It's analog, I guess, is what we're saying. Yeah. CGI is a big one again back to that like you know how they computer and still they don't have this down at all I don't know. I mean it's they're getting good. I don't I don't think they're very even close to it yet, but um, You know they can recreate certain things digitally mm -hmm. 
in CGI, like water and mm-hmm. machines and light and all this stuff. And some of it, they have it straight up. They have it down. But mm-hmm. if you come to when it comes to the human face, the human face, when it's and when it's not animated, it's good. It's pretty solid. Mm-hmm. They can get skin tones and reflections and transparency, all that stuff. But when they start talking, there's so many complexities in your face. And as a human being, instinctually, we recognize them so Ooh, deeply. Yeah. We just can't, we're not even there. We're not, so, but aren't we improving our technology so rapidly that we'll get there a lot quicker than we've got to this point? I, I think so. Yeah, I, th- I believe that is the case. But as of right now, you can get the best, best, best one when it's completely made from CGI. Because now they get a real person's face mm-hmm. and they match this and match that. And even then, man, it's really hard um, unless it's like a super simple expression or a, or a pause or something like that. But you get someone to talk, um, a, a CGI face mm-hmm. to talk, no matter how good it is, it looks weird. It looks actually scary because mm-hmm. it looks like, oh, uh, uh, are you trying to be a person? What about the deep fakes? Uh, see, Somebody just posted a deep fake okay. of me. Yeah, so the deep fakes are a little bit different. <laughs> it was kind of cool. Oh yeah, I was kind of like those are kind of scary too, though. Mm. When you when you think about it or whatever, this I mean for different reasons, obviously. But um, yeah, the deep fakes they take an actual face though. It's not recreated digitally. God, they take your actual face from a million or however many available representations of your face it actually exist yep. they take that and then they match it up to another face so that's a different process but if you get a basically essentially a sculptor and a rigger it's rigging it means like oh i'm gonna control this eyebrow and mm-hmm. this eyelid and all this stuff you rig everything the best best guys it's gonna look like a weird like a weird monster and then there's a word for it the the, the fact that it's weird mm-hmm. it's called the uncanny valley and it's like, so it's this valley between the real deal, recognizing it as the real deal, and then a fake deal. So the smaller the uncanny valley, the more offsetting it is. Mm. So if it's like a straight up robot face, like yeah. if you remember the back of the, like Short Circuit, remember that, that movie? No. Short Circuit, number five. Anyway, but it's I did, a robot. I did watch E.T. the other day with, I don't even, there's an, obviously no CGI in there, but man, I hadn't seen E.T. since I was 10 or whatever, eight or whenever it came out, I saw it in the theater. And like, I remembered like this really good movie, you know, like space and aliens. Have you watched it lately? No. I was was really kind of unimpressed. Steven Spielberg, if you're out there, I I get it, bro. (laughs) You were working with what you had at the time. All good. Jaws is one of my favorite movies ever, so. I appreciate that 100%. Mm. But, you know, when I saw ET, bro, it was kind of it was a it was, it was definitely not what, you know. Why wait, what about it? Like the, the Well, the, for one thing, the quote special effects, right. like ET looks like a like a doll that someone's <laughs> moving around. <laughs> it's but, crazy to hey, watch, dude. Maybe his planet, that's how they look. You see what I'm saying? <laughs> Don't come at me. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, there isn't actually an argument. They call that practical effects versus visual effects. Okay. So like practical effects is like um yeah, like the, the physical thing. Yeah, yeah. Visual is like CGI. Right. Um, it, there's a big argument for practical effects. I, they should I, develop I that. I normally like practical effects. Yeah, I think we all do. But the, the uncanny valley thing, mm-hmm. Like E.T. even, for example, if it's so obviously right. not a yeah, person, yeah, yeah. Yeah. no one can, it's not going to off-put anybody. Everyone's going to be like, okay, cool, it's a non-person, mm-hmm. whatever it is, robot, alien, whatever. But if it is a person, but it's not exactly, exactly straight up a real person, everyone's going to be freaking weirded out by mm-hmm. that thing. So what's weird, what's, to bring this back to what we're talking about, and believe it or not, this entire uh, rabbit hole we just went down to, down is absolutely applicable to what we're talking about. Because what we're talking about is, we're talking about removing the ability for human beings to express themselves properly. Mm-hmm. We're removing that ability. And when we remove words from the language, we're removing the ability for humans to, to express themselves, and therefore we are removing their ability to think. And that is a scary thing. Yeah, yeah. It's like the the difference between you know when you take a test, and there's all kinds of tests, right? So there's like if you go down the spectrum of tests, there's like the the essay question or the mm. thesis, really, mm. the f- straight up thesis. Mm. There's probably more comprehensive tests than that, but well, s- thesis. Yeah. Then you got your essay question mm. test. Then you got a multiple choice. 
and then true false. No, actually, there's a few before multiple choice because you got your um, like, hey, what's this? And you have to say the answer. Okay, fill right? in the deaf. Fill in the deaf, fill in the blanks, sentence, word, whatever. Then you got your multiple choice, right? A, B, C, D, E, all, all the above, none of the above, mm-hmm. whatever. Then you got your true false. True false. Yeah. So now you got just straight binary now. Mm-hmm. It's true false. Mm-hmm. No room for freaking nuance. No nothing. You see what I'm saying? What test did you prefer the most? Well, depends. <laughs> depends what how old I was and what you know what the subject was for sure. If I didn't care, if I just wanted the great, obviously the true false. Really? See, I always felt chance. like I, I always felt like I had a little bit of a better. You know, because maybe I wasn't, you know, when, when we're talking, we're talking, you know, teenage years, maybe I wasn't quite really doing much studying at that time. Yes, sir. <laughs> so, I understand. So, so I could maybe write a better essay and fill in the blanks a little bit about what, you know, maybe I, there's a concept. Because I was good if I understood a concept, I could kind of run with it. Yeah. Whereas true, false, like what happened on this date, I'd be like, because I didn't read, I didn't study it, you know? Yeah. Now, when I went to college, I was like, bring it. I was like, what test you, what kind of test you want to give me? Yeah, but a lot of those, so true, and I'm sure educators have a good grasp on why you would ever administer a true false question uh, test versus, you know, any of the other ones. And I hope anyway, because man, if you're doing like a, like a history, true, false, like that's way more dangerous because of like how much nuance or in perspective, like if you go, okay, so my daughter will ask me questions and mm-hmm. I'll always answer. And I told you this before mm-hmm. where I'll always answer with depends. Mm-hmm. Like oh, yeah, what's good, your what's your favorite color? Freaking depends. That's a good one, bro. My favorite color, what? <laughs> wearing stuff or my car or bro? It's different, you know. Or or not even necessarily. It is different. You just but don't it, say black and it call can it be <laughs> tiger stripe camo. <laughs> <laughs> Most actually, my favorite color actually is black, and they know that. But mm-hmm. then she'll always probe me, be like, "What's your favorite color? What's your favorite color?" And then so it makes you think about it, you know. So I'm like black, but bro, I'm not gonna wear like black under in certain circumstances so, certain blacks you know so, so speaking of tests and speaking of language because yeah. i'm over here just trying to reel things back into well, the subject <laughs> which is you know cool we got it, some opposing forces it depends. here it's it all depends. Good. so check this out when you when you when you went to college and you took was there a possibility of taking a class where you wouldn't get graded by a letter but you would either get through the class or not get through the class yeah. Do you, what was that called? Pass. No pass. Okay. So when I would, because I, I, my my uh, one of my daughters in college, they're like offering now since everything's online, you can take every class. Mm-hmm. She says I can take. You know, she said they're telling us we could take every class. Pass. No pass. Oh, that's that's like the option. You when I was a kid, you know what it's called? Mm. Pass fail. Yeah. Pass. <laughs> that's what I. Mean. That's what it was in ours too. Yeah. It was called pass fail. Yeah. Now it's called pass. No pass. No pass. Right? Unpass, I guess. Yeah, really. unpass, right? Because yeah. we, we remove the word fail Doesn't out of the vocabulary. Oh, yeah, yeah. It might, might mess with people's self-esteem, man. Yeah. Or That's whatever. a fail. <laughs> There's your fail right there. Oh, all right. We're getting back to the book. <clears throat> the second distinguishing mark of new speak grammar was its regularity. Subject to few exceptions which were mentioned below, all inflections followed the same rules. Thus, in all verbs, the preterite and, pa- and past participle were the same and ended in ed. The preterite of steal was stealed. The preterite of think was thinked, and so on throughout the language. All such forms, such as swam, gave, brought, spoke, taken, being abolished. So you like this part, because now it's all more uniformed. The <laughs> rules are, all plurals were made by adding s's or es's, as the case might be. The plurals of man, ox, life, were man's, ox's, life's. Comparison of adjectives was invariably made by adding er or est. Good, gooder, goodest. goodest. Irregular forms and mo- and the more most formation being suppressed. So they got rid of they got rid of more and most and just got good, gooder, goodest. <sighs> The only classes of words which were still allowed to inflect regularly were the proman- pronouns, the relatives, the demonstrative adjectives, and the auxiliary verbs. 
all of these followed their ancient usage except that whom had been scrapped as unnecessary and the shall should tenses had been dropped, all their uses being covered by will and would. There were also certain irregularities in word formation arising out of the need for rapid and easy speech. A word that was difficult to utter, was liable to be incorrectly heard, was held to be ipso facto a bad word. Occasionally, therefore, for the sake of, of euphony, euphony, extra letters were inserted into a word or an archaic formation was retained. But this, was, but this need made itself chi- felt chiefly in connection with the B vocabulary. Why so great an importance was attached to ease of pronunciation will be made clear later in this essay. So one of their main purposes was to make these things easy to say and, not, and clear. Yeah. We're trying to dumb everything down for society. Yeah. Yeah, like, you know how every once in a while you see, like, one of these little diagrams. And they say, like, re- the, like I, I don't know if they, actually, I don't think they say this is proper. But the whole diagram implies that it's proper. So it's, like, very good. And then they say, don't say very good. Say excellent. You got know, it. Yeah, don't yeah, yeah. say whatever. Say that you know they like they tell you the actual yeah, yeah. word for very like don't say, and it's it in a weird way it almost seems like it's the opposite of that you know where if it's like hey yeah yeah they're trying to expand your vocabulary yeah expanding it is the opposite it. like when you're in when you write a a, a a English paper in ninth grade and you say the chicken that I ate last night was very 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 dry yeah yeah very. very, very. <laughs> You get checked. <laughs> you don't. You come up with a better word. Right. Don't just put another very on that yeah. thing to give it another level of yeah. goodness. You yeah. Know? Yeah. That's what. That's that's a beautiful thing. That's yeah. the way it should be. Right. We should be. We should be. People should be learning more words. Our vocabulary should be growing. Yeah. You know what's interesting is that very interesting. Very interesting. <laughs> What, f- fascinating. What, what's the next go, word? We'll, up go fascinating. Intri- we'll go fascinating. Because no, interesting kind of seems ambiguous. Like it's interesting in a good way or a bad way. True, you know, true. Fascinating is like I'm. It's like wonderfully interesting. Okay. Is that where? Is that what this is? Yeah, no. Okay. Eh, maybe. I don't okay. know. Certain levels. Anyway, um, even in slang, we have that. You know, like even like I can think of an example. Strangely, but you know, like how slang, <laughs> like you'll have it, like oh yeah, you're a. Okay, these are all swear words, so I don't want to do that example. But you can be like, oh yeah, he's cool, or he's um whack, whack, or he's dope, or he's what you know. And there's all these escalating oh, levels yeah, of hierarchy slang. of compliments. Yeah, you know, so you can say, oh yeah, he's cool, or you can say he's very cool, or you can say he's like. The bee's knees. I don't know. I just made that up or whatever. And I didn't make it up. I just thought of it. But <laughs> you know how like there's different slang words for different degrees of Got a certain it. So things. So even slang has an even escalating slang. Uh, hierarchy of words of, to explain things. Yeah. The expanded slang vocabulary Check. exists as well. Uh, now we get into the B vocabulary. The B vocabulary consisted of words which had been deliberately constructed for political purposes. Words, that is to say, which not only had every case... In every case, a political implication, but were intended to impose desirable, a desirable mental attitude on the person using them. Without a full understanding of the principles of Ingsoc, it was difficult to use these words cor- correctly. In some cases, they could be translated into old speak or even into words taken from a vocabulary, but this usually demanded a long paraphrase and always involved the loss of certain overtones. The B words were a sort of verbal shorthand, often packing whole ranges of ideas into a few syllables and at the same time more accurate and forcible than ordinary language. The B words were in all cases compound words. They consisted of two or more words or portions of words welded together in an easily pronounceable form. The resulting was always a noun verb and inflected according to the ordinary rules. To take a simple example, the word good think, meaning very roughly orthodoxy, or if one chooses to regard it as a verb to think in an orthodox manner, this inflected as follows. Noun verb, good think, the past tense and 
past participle, good thinked, present participle, good thinking, adjective, good thinkful, and adverb, good think wise, verbal noun, good thinker. The B words were not constructed on any etymological plan. The words of which they were made up could be parts of any speech, could be placed in any order, and mutilated in any way, which made them easy to pronounce while indicating their their derivatives. In the word crime think, thought crime, for instance, the think came second, whereas in think poll, which was the thought police, it came first. And in the latter, the word police had lost its second syllable. Because of the great difficulty in in making it sound good, irregular formations were commoner in the B vocabulary than the A vocabulary. For example, adjective forms of miniature, or sorry, mini true, mini packs, mini love were respectively the ministry of truth, mini truthful, mini peaceful, mini lovely, simply because truthful, packsful, and lovely, loveful were slightly awkward to pronounce. He went deep on this. Some of the B words had highly subtilized meanings. Subtilized meanings. Barely intelligible to anyone who had not mastered the language as a whole. Consider, for example, the typical sentence from a Times leading article as old old thinkers unbelly feel ing sock. (laughs) The shortest rendering that could make this of that could make that one could make of this an old speak would be those whose ideas were formed before the revolution cannot have a full emotional understanding of the principles of English so- socialism. So that whole sentence gets translated into old thinkers, unbelly feel ing sock. <laughs> <sighs> the greatest difficulty facing the compilers of new speak of the new speak dis- dictionary was not to invent new words, but having invented them, to make sure what they meant. To make sure, that is to say, what ranges of words they canceled because of their existence. If you you made up a new word, it had to get rid of a bunch of other words. Yeah. (laughs) We have already seen that in the case of the word free, words which had once borne a heretical uh, heretical (coughs) message, meaning were sometimes retained for the sake of convenience, but only with the undesirable meanings purged out of them. Other words such as honor, justice, morality, internationalism, democracy, science, and religion had simply ceased to exist. A few blanket words covered them and in covering them abolished them. All words grouping themselves around the concepts of liberty and equality, for instance, were contained contained in the single word crime think, while all words grouping themselves around the concepts of objectivity and rationalism were contained in the single word, word old think. Man, that's really disturbing to think about. Just the fact that you take, you get rid of the words. <laughs> And now how do we even, you know, how do you teach it to your kids? Mm. Greater precision would have been dangerous. What was required in a party member was an outlook similar to that of the ancient Hebrew who knew without knowing much else that all nations other than his own worshiped false gods. He did not need to know that these gods were called Baal, Osiris, Moloch, and the like. Probably the less he knew about them, the better for his orthodoxy. That's a very cool explanation. He knew Jehovah and the commanders of Jeho- and the commandments of Jehovah. He knew, therefore, that all gods with other names or other attributes were false gods. In somewhat the same way, the party member knew what constituted right conduct. And in exceedingly vague, generalized terms, he knew what kinds of departure from it were possible. So you only know the right, and everything else is just bad. Mm-mm. Everything else is false, everything else is a lie, that's all you need to know. No B word, no word in the B vocabulary is ideologically neutral. A great many name, names were euphemisms. Words, such words for instance as joy camp, which was a forced labor camp, 
or mini packs, which is the ministry of war, which is the ministry of peace is what it was short for, but it, it really meant the ministry of war, meant almost the exact opposite of what they appeared to mean. Some words, on the other hand, displayed a frank and contemptuous understanding of the real nature of oceanic society. An example was prol feed, meaning the rubbishy entertainment and spurious news which the party handed out to the masses. Other words, again, were ambiv- ambivalent, having the connotation good when applied to the party and bad when applied to its enemies. <laughs> good thinking, bad think. But in addition, there were great numbers of words which at first sight appeared to be mere abbreviations and which derived their ideological color not from their meaning but from their structure. Fast forward a little bit. He talks, starts talking about um, in the Ministry of Truth, for example, the records department in which Winston Smith works worked was called the Rec Dep. The fictional department was called the Fic Dep. The teleprograms department was called the Teledep, and so on. This was not done solely with the object of saving time. Even in the early decades of the 20th century, telescoped words and phrases had been one of characteristic features of political language, and it had been noticed that the tendency to use abbreviations of this kind was most marked in totalitarianism countries and totalitarian organizations. Examples were such words as Nazi, Gestapo, Comintern, Agiprop. In the beginning, the practice had been adopted as, as it were instinctively, but Newspeak but, we, but in Newspeak, it was used with a conscious purpose. It was perceived that in thus abbreviating a name, one narrowed the subtlety, altered, and altered its meaning by cutting out most of the associations that would otherwise cling to it. That's very interesting. The words communist international, for instance, call up a composite picture of universal human brotherhood, red flags, barricades, Karl Marx, and the Paris Commune. The word common turn, on the other hand, suggests merely a tight-knit organization of well-defined body of doctrine. It refers to something almost as easily recognized and limited in purpose as a chair on the table. I wonder why I use communist term instead of Nazis. It seems like Nazis is the like national socialism. Mm-hmm. Those two words have their own meanings, you know, and mm-hmm. and you know you can attach a bunch of things to nationalism and socialism. But you know when you put those words together and shorten it into Nazi, it doesn't get more obvious that we just made something different. And it, and like he's saying, it makes it a tight group. Mm-hmm. It removes all the other things that can hang on to these words. Mm-hmm. In the same way, the associations <laughs> called up by a word like mini true are fewer and more controllable than those called up by ministry of truth. This accounted for the habit not only the habit of abbreviating whenever possible, but also for the almost exaggerated care that was taken to make every word easily pronounceable. Hmm. For the purposes of everyday life, it was no doubt necessary or sometimes necessary to reflect before speaking, but a party member a party member called upon to make a political or ethical judgment should be able to spray forth the correct opinions as automatically as a machine gun spraying forth bullets. His training fitted him to do this. The language gave him an almost foolproof instrument and the texture of the words and their harsh sound and certain willfulness, willing, willful ugliness, which was in accord with the spirit of Ing Sok assisted the process further. This That, that little section there is like, remind me of what you see today when People just have their go-to terms that they're, that's, that's what they're gonna throw, right? Mm-hmm. They just have, they're just gonna attack with the, 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 the damn attack words. <laughs> you know, like I'm coming at you, mm-hmm. right? Uh, you just, you just hear it. What are the, what the buzzwords? That's what I was looking for. More you know, like the, cliche. Yeah, but they're coming at you with the cliche. Uh, like, oh, that guy's a commie. That guy's a Nazi. You know, they, they, they got, they're just going to, you know, you, you're, you're on the other side. Cool. You're a Nazi. Oh, right. Like, it, they, they kind of 
throw it all kind of into one almost like yeah um, yeah here's here's my argument you know you say hey Jocko um, I think that uh, there should be voter ID in America and I say you're a Nazi right, <laughs> right. Yeah, you know yeah. like that's that's yeah, kind of the same thing and yeah. then ba- basically then all my friends start calling you a Nazi as well right right or racist or and whatever. then and then I say well you know echo I think that we should have uh, you know some form of welfare to help people out and you're like you're a commie and yeah, then all your friends call me a commie so that's like yeah, yeah. that's what i'm saying that's what that reminds me of gotcha, uh, yeah, yeah, everybody please. should be able to spray forth the correct opinions as automatically as a machine gun spraying forth bullets <laughs> correct <laughs> opinion yep <sighs> scary um Then you get into the C vocabulary, and when you get in the C vocabulary, there was indeed no word for science. Any meaning that could possibly bear being already covered by the word ingsoc. So, so everything is just, it's just based on ingsoc. Mm. And science, that's just ingsoc. That's what they say is correct. Mm-hmm. That's science. So you don't need all these other words. Mm. And, and, and C vocabulary was supplementary to others and consisted entirely of scientific and technical terms. But like I said, there's not too many of them. Um, ideas inimical to Ingsoc, which is like hostile to Ingsoc, could, be, could only be entertained in a vague wordless form and could not only be named in very broad terms, which lumped together and condemned whole groups of heresies without defining them in doing so. So it's kind of similar to what I just said. Oh, you, you want, (laughs) you, you're, you're a, you're a conservative, you're a Nazi. Oh, you're a liberal, you're a commie. Mm -hmm. That's the same thing, right? Your whole group is just Nazis. Your whole group is just commies. That's where we're at. Right. The concept of political equality no longer existed. And this secondary meaning had accordingly been purged out of the word equal. In 1984, when old speak was still the normal means of communication, the danger theoretically existed that in using new speak, words one might remember their original meanings. In practice, it was not difficult for any person to be well grounded in double think to avoid doing this, but within a lapse, within a couple generations, even the possibility of such a lapse would have vanished. So they're going to get rid of the language over time. Like my kid might remember the other meaning of the word free, right. but his kids are going to maybe, maybe, maybe his kids, but may, by the time you get two generations, we're good. No more freedom. Not even a, not even a thought. <clears throat> Getting to the end here, when old, and I'm fast forwarding through a bunch of stuff. When old speak had been once and for all superseded, the last link with the past would have been severed. So if they could have gotten control of the language, they would have made it. History had already been rewritten, but fragments of the literature of the past survived here and there, imperfectly censored. They didn't quite get rid of all the language. Mm. And so long as one retained one's knowledge of old speak, it was possible to read them. In the future, such fragments, even if they are chance to survive, would be unintelligible and untranslatable. It was possible to translate any passage of old speak into new speak unless it unless it either referred to some technical process or some very simple notion. Very simple everyday action or was already orthodox. Good thinkful would be the new speak expression and tendency. In practice, this meant no book written before approximately 1960 could be translated as a whole. Pre-revolutionary literature could only be subjected to ideological translation. That is alteration in sense as well as language. Take, for example, the well-known passage from the Declaration of Independence. We hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their creator with certain inalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, that to secure these rights, governments are instituted among men, deriving their powers from the consent of the governed. That whatever any form of government becomes destructive of those ends, it is the right of the people to alter or abolish it, and so to institute new government. 
it would have been quite impossible to render this into newspeak while keeping it to the sense of the original. The nearest one could come to doing so would be to swallow the whole passage up in the single word crime think. (laughs) (laughs) The whole thing was just crime speak. Goes on here, a good deal of the literature of the past was indeed already being transformed this way. Considerations of prestige made it desirable to preserve the memory of certain historical figures, while at the same time bridging their achievements into line with the, philosoph- with the philosophy of Ingsoc. Various writers, such as Shakespeare, Milton, Swift, Byron, Dickens, and some of the others were therefore in the process of translation. When the task had been completed, their original writings with all else that survived of the literature of the past would be destroyed. These translations were a slow, difficult business, and it was not expected that they would be finished before the first or second decade of the 21st century. There were also large quantities of merely utilitarian literature, indispensable technical manuals and the like that had to be treated the same way. It was chiefly in order to allow time for the preliminary work of translation that the final adoption of Newspeak had been fixed for so late a date as 2050. So there you go. That's this in uh, this that's this appendix, and and you know you can see that they failed. They failed to change the language, which means they failed to get control of speech they failed to to ban free thought because of that and because of that they failed to successfully enslave the world in their tyranny so very very scary very scary document and that's the language. That's the control of the language based on reality, based on history. The language control of, a, of, of the government of a dystopian future. And, and you can see it's amazing how close Orwell got it. And as Cowboy warned us, it's something we need to watch out for. And... We can't control everything, but we need to control what we can. And, and going back to the, the beginning of this, that's why we don't have sponsors here who might limit what we say or limit what we talk to or limit who we talk to. That's why this podcast right here, what we're doing, that's why it's open and it's free for everyone so that as many people as possible hear the lessons of history. Hear the reflections of human nature in the past so we can all learn and we can remember what's happened in the past so we don't repeat it. So we've managed to maintain control of that but we don't really have control of everything here. And, and one of the things that we don't have control of is the platforms that we come out on. And we rely, obviously, we rely heavily on the platforms. And the platforms have been good to, good, good to us for the most part so far. All the platforms, wherever you're listening to this right now, we, we've been treated well. It's been good. But at the same time, <laughs> Any of those platforms that we publish this podcast on, could they could actually shut us down if they wanted to. They could pull the plug. They could hold us hostage. <laughs> and I don't like that. And, and we don't like that. So we did some contingency planning. Little contingency planning. Look. Hope, what's, the, what's the purpose of contingency? Hopefully you don't need to use a contingency plan. That's the hope, is that you don't need to use a contingency plan. But if we have to, we, we, we figured we better do some contingency planning just in case. So we're, gonna, we're 
putting together our own platform as a contingency, setting up our own network or I guess reinforcing it, being prepared. If we have to, I hope it doesn't go that way, but we'll be ready to, we'll have a little sovereign land of our own. Echo Charles, our own little sovereign little area, little digital land, little little autonomous place (laughs) that we, we will have control over, that we can do what we want. And Echo's been working hard on this, right? Um, to put this together, a place where we can muster if we have to, a place where we can bring our friends, their podcast if we need to, a place where we can talk and we can argue and we can theorize, a place where we can dissent, we can subvert and we can rebel, a place where we're free, a place where we are free to do what we want to do in case we need it. Okay, so sounds fired up to me, actually. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what does it mean pragmatically? So, like I said, Echo has been, for the past few weeks, putting together some, the, 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 the actual sovereign world, the, the underground, the, the deaf core underground, doing the technical work, besides just pressing record. Imagine. Echo has skills. A separate, so, so, so what we set up, what Echo set up, because pretty much I didn't do anything besides like <laughs> say we better do this just in case, and Echo said, Roger that. So a separate, an underground, a podcast feed that's underground, right? Um, a separate underground forum, uh, a separate underground kind of way to communicate, to us, <laughs> and listen, this podcast that we're doing right here, the Jocko Podcast, this will remain free and available to all for as long as it is allowed to be free and available. I, I will never change that by my own volition, and believe me, we have had opportunity upon opportunity to do that, to go behind the firewall. Paywall. The paywall. And we haven't done that, and we won't do that. So as long as this, as long as we're allowed to do this, we'll do it. But if, but we do need to have contingency planning. If you want to get in the game, if you want to support the underground, that would be appreciated. And and in order to, like, when we do that, in order we got to give something, in order to kind of show our appreciation, we'll do some things on the underground to. You know, show our appreciation. You know, maybe some additional sort of podcast things. Maybe some podcasts that don't fit in the typical format of a usual Jocko podcast. Because that's one thing that you know, I think that the I try and maintain a consistency with the Jocko podcast. That when you press play, you kind of know what you're getting, or you at least have some idea. So for me to throw out something that's you know really. Uh, maybe a lot shorter, or maybe it's a different subject matter, or maybe it's some kind of current events-based thing, whatever, I don't know. But we'll be able to do that. We'll be able to do that. We'll be able to do whatever we want because we will have pure pure freedom. <laughs> we'll answer questions, probably do some Q&A a little bit more because you know, at, at some point, if you recall the early days of the podcast, it was like, A, I could just respond to you on Twitter, which I would, because it was just, hey, oh, you ask a question, cool, I'll just answer you. Oh, and if it was a good question, maybe bring it on the podcast and answer it. But that became overwhelming um, because there's just too many questions to, to answer them all. I haven't even done a Q&A in a while. So we'll do some Q&A type stuff. This is, you know, so you can ask questions direct. Um, now you were saying something about like doing some kind of live connections. Yeah. If we choose to, yeah. So if people want to, well, it's we, me, the proverbial, all of us, if yeah. we. If, if that's our <laughs> choice, yes. Uh, yeah. So that's what we're doing. 
obviously we'll be open to whatever suggestions you you know you got so that's what we're doing well we got to pay for it there's gonna be a little price a little price to pay for freedom we came up with a a pricing number if you can figure out the layers of this number what will they win let's let's this needs to be rewarded if you can fi- I, I bet someone can figure it out the if you if you if you want to join eight dollars and eighteen cents a month, <laughs> and if you can figure out the layers between be, behind eight eighteen, let us know. You will win something. Something, yeah. Something It'll good. be cool. Something. It'll be a yeah. cool something. Do you think it's so obvious that everyone will figure it out? It's, it's very possible. Okay, so maybe you. May, if depending on how many people get. <laughs> oh, let's say this: the first three people. Yeah, okay. That get it okay. will be rewarded, but that way you know, look a little bit of a little bit of cost for freedom. That way we can invest in all these different things that we want to do. And and by the way, if you're freaked out or you're like money grab and whatever, cool, no no factor. If you can't afford that, if it's too much, we we want you to listen. Echo will take care of you. He's writing down that email right now because he just made it up. So he will have it live. And yeah, but if you can't afford to chip in, that's awesome too. And we appreciate it. There's also, you know, talking to some other friends right now that have other podcasts about, you know, giving them the same kind of, bringing them into the fold. And that's where we're at. And like I said, I hope it doesn't come to a point where we need to go full deaf core underground. But we prepare. We make contingency plans and we execute. So we'll do some cool stuff and we'll be ready. One more excerpt from 1984. Here's the quote. Don't you see that the whole aim of new speak is to narrow the range of thought? In the end, we shall make thought crime literally impossible because there will be no words in which to express it, end quote. Well, we will maintain the words and we will maintain our freedom. Echo. Yes, sir. So well, how do people join the Jocko Defcore Underground? Go to <clears throat> JockoUnderground.com. That's it. Just straight <laughs> up. That's all you got to do. Go there and that's where you can join if you want. There you go. Yeah, cool. Kind of crazy. What? It, uh, so, obviously, we're we're not just sitting around waiting for a dystopian future to to be delivered unto us. No, we are not. No, we're preparing for it. Yes, sir. We also got to prepare for other things in life. Yeah, we want to be prepared. We want to have capabilities. Yes. What do you recommend? So okay, so bad, and I I vaguely heard of this book, 1984. Are you serious? Yeah, crazy enough. I don't know. Maybe I. I don't know. Like maybe I'm quiet. That's just not how. Okay. Apparently. I don't know. Maybe I missed it. I don't know. Okay. But it's really interesting because like there are little parts of that. Like we all of that stuff that they're doing and trying to do or whatever. We do that in little ways. Oh, and it's yeah. actually the thing is it's useful and it's actually beneficial in a lot of ways. As long as it's not across the board, like, this what is you what we're about? doing. What like, are you, well, if it, you lost me there when you when said you we're doing make, this and it's beneficial. You want to make things binary, which we talked about on the last episode, actually. That's a d- completely different it's thing, a, it's bro. A, it's the same concept, except it's used for good. So, well, like, Dude, you're getting wrapped around the fact that you have a computer programming mind and you want to no. take the English language and put it into no. a totally formatted system. No. And it so, doesn't. Again, work. again, if it's across the board, you know why it doesn't work. I'll tell you why it doesn't work. It's like jujitsu. Mm-hmm. Language is like the English language is like jujitsu. Words come into it mm-hmm. and they get adapted into it if they're good. If yeah. they work. If they don't, then they get shut down. Oh yeah, fully. And then the same thing with like methodology in general. So if you like, okay, so the binary thing, right? Mm-hmm. The binary thing. They're they're implementing that in language across the board, or that concept anyway, across the board. That's bad. But you can use that in specific nuanced ways to make it like a more efficient situation like working out or something like that where okay so i was working out today actually something tells me you just want to tell me this story and you're given some kind of a no no (laughs) so (laughs) this is this is an exact 
this is why this whole book is interesting. It's it, it basically one of the many lessons or whatever is like you can take a, a, a good thing and just take it too far if you implement True. it across the board. Dichotomy of leadership. A lot of this stuff, yeah, fully. A lot of this stuff, again, in teeny tiny doses or used just like sparingly is like it's good thing. Like salt, really. Mm-hmm. Put a little bit of salt on top. It's pretty nice. Okay. Put too much salt or you put all salt right you're dead. True. So anyway, I'm working out. And my little son, he's like four now. He's doing, you know, he's he's copying more and trying to understand mm-hmm. and, and actively understanding like what these kettlebell benefits. swings. Yeah, he was doing little yeah. kids like the kettlebell swings, don't they? Uh, <laughs> you know, I I don't want them to quite do. T- my daughter does them mm-hmm. or wants to do them. Whatever. I don't. I don't know. I don't need her like slipping and bashing her shin with that little kettlebell. I don't know. Anyway, burpees all day. Okay, yes. well, we can talk about that offline. Yes, sir. Anyway. Because having your kids do kettlebell swings is a good thing. Seems like beneficial. Yeah. Okay, cool. Um, Work on that coordination if we're worried about leg hits, shin hits. Yes, sir. Okay, yeah, makes sense. shoes. Makes what? sense to me. So, <laughs> anyway. Um, so, my daughter was there, and she was, like, um, talking about, like, how her leg, because she went to that running thing, where her legs are all sore and all this stuff. Meanwhile, my son, he's over here getting after it or whatever, right? And he's like, hey, I'm doing this or whatever so I can be strong. So my daughter's there listening. So I was like, yeah, it's true, and you're going to understand in life. Answer me this. W- what's better, to be strong or weak? Strong. They say strong. What's it better, to know how to do something or to not know how to do something? They say, to know how to do something. So, okay, what's better, to be healthy or unhealthy? They say healthy or whatever, right? Mm-hmm. So, obviously, life is, there's way more to it than what's just that. What's better, do kettlebell swings or not do kettlebell swings? Oh, well, that's, see, that's another <laughs> one of those things. At, on the surface, you'd say, yeah, kettlebell swings all day. But the, the point is, there's a lot more to it than that. But if I use that binary terminology just uh, for that moment, it's going to send a, a message more effectively. Granted, it's a good message at this point, but you oh, yeah. apply that across the board, right? You just eliminate understanding, nuance, all these important yeah. things. So I get saying. it. I get it. Your your theory is accepted, but it's really, really, it, you're, you're taking like something massively destructive yes. and, and just taking a little tiny piece of it and yeah. say, saying it's good. Yeah, like salt. Okay. Like I said. We'll go with it. But if if I have a steak, come on, Jocko steak, right? All day. If I have a steak, I put a little bit of salt on it. Does that make it better or worse? In your opinion. That's an opinion. Can we put pepper on it too? Yes, sir. Yes. Okay. What if? You put the whole thing. All salt. You put the whole thing. Wouldn't be good. Actually, let me start eliminating some of the steaks to make room for more of the salt. In fact, at the end of the day, let's remove the whole steak. Just salt and pepper. Oh, wait, you want pepper, right? So salt and pepper. Right, your day. It's not even good. It's not even the same thing. See what I'm saying? Yeah. I got it. So a little bit is good. A lot of it. So a little bit of language control inside your own family with your children, trying mm-hmm. to explain to them basic things like a binary decision-making process between good and bad in an immediate way right. is, is a positive thing. Got to it. To influence their thoughts, for sure. Got it. Well, across the board, maybe not. Just right. remind me not to let you become dictator where you've run that game yep. on the whole maybe. country. Uh-huh. Well, there you go. The world. <laughs> sure, the world too. All right, anyway... Speaking of working out, yeah, I worked out today. <laughs> We're expanding our capabilities, our strength, our health, all that stuff, right? That's what this path is. So in the spirit of being pathful, you see what I'm doing there? Anyway, we got supplements, boom, Jocko Fuel. We got stuff for your joints so you don't have to think about them aching anymore. Mm-hmm. You don't have to worry about thinking about them aching anymore. Thinking about that stuff won't even exist. It'll be impossible to th- even think about it. Those thought crimes, <laughs> etc. Anyway, joint warfare. Um, also, super krill oil. These things help your joints, boom, keep you in the game, even as we age through this human existence. Also, discipline and discipline go. It's for your mind, for your body too. It's a daily thing, I think. But yes, enhance your cognitive capabilities as far as capabilities go. Have you improved your routine where you're 100% on krill and, and, and joint warfare with no no holes in your game? No lapses. Um, you, did you just use the word 100%? Yeah. No. 
Okay. How can you not do that? Why don't you just put them when you brush your teeth? You take it. I know. Uh, well, I thought we covered that for, as far as the brushing the teeth part because the routine is it's nuanced. Anyway, it's because uh, to really point it out, it's when the whole COVID thing mm -hmm. came to my shores. Mm -hmm. I was like. I grabbed the vitamin D3 in the Cold War. I was that like my mind shifted to that as the priority. Mm -hmm. And then it'd be like one day, oh, I didn't take the krill oil, you know, not because like, oh, I neglected. I was like, OK, I'm just going to take this now or whatever. It's not as implemented into the routine as it should be. It's really crazy to me. Yeah. Really crazy to me that this is not a big like thing, dude. This is a really <laughs> thing you could just do. Well, here, here's put the, the, put the bottles bro. next to your toothbrush. You know what it is? It, no. Th this is this is really what it is now that I'm like anal analyzing my whole mind because you're right. You're you're yeah. like we know it like helps you so much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. So here's the thing. I'm violating two rules or maybe it's just one rule with different terms. Resting on my laurels and complacency. Mm, okay. So you know yeah. how like bro, my joints don't hurt. So I'm not compelled to solve any problem. You see what I'm saying? But I'm not kind of I'm not taking my own advice. You know yeah. how you, like you don't want to think then about two that. Two days go by and then you do feel your joints. Uh, it's like like four, five, six days. You know, if I'm you go deep. six days until I start feeling it. Yeah, but Dang. oh, I'm not like off them. I don't have issues right now. Oh, but okay. I'm just saying, like as far as hundred percent daily, the way mm -hmm. that that when I when I do put it together, I'm just not doing that. Right. But I'm getting there. But yeah, no issues for sure. Um, but that's, I think, hey, baby steps, bro. Baby, baby steps. steps. We're getting there. We're yeah. working on it. We're working yeah. on that discipline. Yeah. So the lesson there is even take, I got to take my own advice. We don't want to think about that kind of stuff, but the only way to not think about your joints hurting or hurting in the future is to through discipline, take them every day. See, now you're like that guy that's, you know, giving advice about something they're not actually doing. Yeah. Kind of, kind of sad. <laughs> <laughs> I'll give the advice. Hey, take them every day. There yeah. you go. I take do. Them every day. Okay. Don't do what Echo does. Don't do what I do. Well, technically, take them every day. I don't know that I say take it every day. I say take it, and so you don't have to worry about your joints. But look, I'm saying right now, and I'm start doing it right now. How about that? Next time you check in with me, hundred percent. I'm worried to check in with you. Anyway, you might be on cocaine or something. Anyway, <laughs> discipline and discipline go for your brain. For your body, for your whole thing, for your whole life, really. Discipline go in a can. That's what I'm going to talk about. You like energy drinks? Cool. You don't like energy drinks? Yeah, I know why. Cool. Discipline go in a can is everything that an energy drink should be and more. In my opinion. It's like you a health. You painted yourself drink. into a corner right there. You know, he wanted to give the counter example, <laughs> but you painted yourself into a corner. You couldn't escape. Hey man, I, I'm a creative. It's all know, the good thinking. without the bad. It's it's all the good without the bad. That's yeah, all the good without the in bad. In with the good, out with the bad. Yep. Go. The, Go. Get some. Yeah, it's fully good. It's in Wawa right now. Yep. It's online. You can get it wherever you want. Accessibility is not the issue here. Yeah, yeah. Yep, it's yep. about making the correct choice. By the way. Mm hmm. Freedom to choose. Freedom to choose the right thing. Yeah. You can get this stuff at Wawa. You can get it at Vitamin Shop. You can get it at OriginMain.com. You can actually get it on Amazon. All this stuff. Mulk, protein, discipline, just the whole nine yards. Check it out if you want to If you want to get after it. Also, at Origin Main, you got jujitsu gear. Because we are training jujitsu for a multitude of reasons, mm -hmm. as we found out on that last podcast. Is it better to be capable or incapable? We want to be capable. If you choose to Look fight someone, do you want the choice to fight someone and win or no choice? It's better to be capable or uncapable. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so is it better to do jujitsu or un jujitsu? Yeah, I we know. We want to do jujitsu. You want to be jujitsu jiu full? Jujitsu is double plus good. Yes. Yes, sir. <laughs> so go to go to originmain.com. Get geese, get rash cards. You can also get jeans, boots, t shirts. And the thing is, all the stuff is made in America. All made in a factory up in Maine, and it's awesome. We're bringing manufacturing back to America, so support if you can. What else? Jocko's store. It's called Jocko Store. Same deal. If you want to represent uh, on this path, if you want to be pathful, 
and represent at the same time, <laughs> just, hey, man, you can go to JockoStory.com, get a discipline shirt, hoodie, hat, mm-hmm. some rash guards on there. Uh, we do have a T-shirt club. If you're into it, man, if you're into representing monthly variety, different stuff. So that's this is the kind of thing where maybe that's where the ungood T-shirt comes from, right? Oh, like slides in as far yeah, as the implementation. Let's yeah. face it. It's very cool if you kind of. If you're kind of in the game, <laughs> if you right? you know the deal, yes. Like if I see someone with an ungood T-shirt on from from that, I'll be like, mm, yep. So you might want to put that one in the lineup. Mm-hmm. Put it in the lineup. Uh, Little yeah, ungood. You heard it here first, Jocko's idea. Good one. I like it. It's uh, it's not ungood. I'll tell you that. Um, but yes, T-shirt color every month. You know, it's like one of those things in the theme of today's deal. It's ex- it's not narrowing down your options for representation. It's expanding them. See what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So anyway, yeah, T-shirt club. Uh, Check that out if you want. Boom, on jockostore.com. Also, uh, subscribe to the podcast. We got to, you know, the platforms that we're on. Like I said, they've been good to us. Let's hope they stay that way. Subscribe to it. Check it out. We also got we got this podcast. We got the Jocko Unraveling podcast. We got Grounded podcast. We got the Warrior Kid podcast. We got a YouTube channel where Echo does excessive amounts of CGI and uncanny fakes or what? What do you say? Uncanny Valley. Uncanny. He's he's out there in the uncanny valley. He's walking through the uncanny valley of death. Uncanny valley of death, and he fears no robots. Nope. So check out that. Also got little excerpts on there. We got psychological warfare, which is a, a me talking for like a minute, two minutes, three minutes at a t- at a whack, mm-hmm. and I'm telling you. Put your donut down. I'm telling you, get out of bed. I'm telling you why to do it. Yeah. I'm gonna help you achieve what you want to achieve. When you don't feel work. like it. Yeah, even when you don't feel like it. Yeah. Flip side canvas. Mm-hmm. Stuff you can hang on your wall. Some people would say art. Yeah. I would say graphic visual representations of the path of justice. I do. <laughs> <laughs> Got a bunch of books. A bunch of books about face. Leadership strategy and tactics. Discipline equals freedom. Field manual, brand new version. You can probably can probably get that one for you know somebody that you know that could use a little a little adjustment in life. Yeah. Maybe it's the kind of person. Maybe it's the kind of person that right now they could use some help. Maybe when they wake up in the morning, instead of having a routine where they take the supplements they're supposed to take, maybe they could just figure out through this book they could. Find the discipline that it takes to put a bottle next to their toothbrush and take it. Thank you, Jocko, for that. Anyways, you can check out that book, This Minkle Freedom Field Manual, Way the Warrior Kid 4 Field Manuals Out, Way the Warrior Kid 1, 2, and 3, Mike and the Dragons, Extreme Ownership, Dichotomy of Leadership. We got Echelon Front, which is a leadership consultancy. We solve problems through leadership. Go to echelonfront.com for details on that. We got EF Online. We're on there all the time, live, doing Q&As. We got discussions happening with an entire network of leaders from all kinds of different industries. And the Echelon Front team, myself, the rest of the team, we're on there all the time. So check out efonline.com. We have the Muster, which is our leadership seminar. We got Phoenix, March 3rd and 4th. Orlando, May 25th and 26th. And Las Vegas, October 28th and 29th. Go to extremeownership.com. Look, by that time, let's face it, COVID's gonna be over. We got the vaccine, we got vitamin D, we got all kinds of good stuff going on. I'm calling it. Well, let's hope it's over. Let's hope it's over. Then look, we didn't have any musters this year, so obviously we got a bunch of people that are already signed up to go, but if you wanna, if you wanna come, check it out, extremeownership.com. We got EF Overwatch, we got executive leadership for your company. If you want to hire a former military person that understands the principles we talk about all the time, check out efoverwatch.com. And if you wanna help service members, active duty service members, retired service members, their families, Gold Star families, then check out Mark Lee's mom, Mama Lee, She's got a charity organization, and if you want to donate or get involved, check out americasmightywarriors.org. And if you want to bring some dystopian future into your present day, we got you covered. 
You can get more of my despondent diatribes, or you can get more of Echo's disoriented differentiations. You can find us on the interwebs. And we definitely got some disoriented differentiations from you today, didn't we? Uh, and you no. can find us on the interwebs, on Twitter, on Instagram, which you know Echo only refers to as the gram, and on that Facebook. <laughs> Echo is at Echo Charles. I am at Jocko Willink. And thanks to all the military people out there in the world that fight against tyranny and oppression every single day and keep us free and thanks to police and law enforcement firefighters paramedics emts dispatchers correctional officers border patrol secret service all first responders for being there when we are in our time of need and to everyone else out there don't take freedom for granted and countless sacrifices have been made to secure freedom and to preserve it and if we have to preserve it and I know that we don't do it perfectly but I do believe that in the battle of good versus evil and light versus dark and truth versus lie I believe that truth and light and good will prevail but there may be times of darkness and for those times we will be ready and we we may have to go underground at some point but we will never surrender and we will never submit to tyranny discipline equals freedom and freedom will overcome all and until next time this is echo and jocko out <laughs>